Hey up everybody and welcome back. Right, well, uh, had a lot of comments and as I expected, I got a bunch of hinch, oh, hinch, hints and tips from the C15 people. So thank you very much for them. Little things like uh, when I was putting that split pin in, which don't worry, the split pin was fine. Uh, if you put it in, I think it's fourth gear, the hole is pointing out, it's easier to get the pin in and then you can slip it through. And So anyway, lots of stuff like that. So there's a couple of things. Um, we're going to do the clutch, the sort of electronic ignition and generator and finish all the wiring off and everything on that side. Um, other things, oh the distributor by the way, I just joggled a little bit, it can't be quite in right, that's gone down flat. Uh, Polish these covers up. But one thing that was mentioned, well, a couple of things actually, had that little hole. I should have thought of this myself. The camshaft is hollow and it has a hole drilled in it so that when the piston's coming down and uh, pressurizes the crankcase, the hole in the camshaft lines up with an outer hole, it does in the triumphs and all sorts of things. So that's just a breather, it's a timed breather. And actually, at the bottom here, there's another little hole for that to go run back into the sump. So that was that. The other thing that was mentioned, and when I thought about it, I kicked myself a little bit really, was the spring, the sort of detente spring that holds the gear change cam plate in its notches. It's a little worn and uh, it's fine. I wasn't going to really do anything with it, but these two holes here, where this plate goes on, they're 2BA and the bottom one is stripped. I'd run a tap through it and you can see threads but when I put the bolt in, when it tightens down it just gives that little skip you know and then it's slack again. So the eagle eyes amongst you have noticed I've actually put another pin in because when I read that little tip I thought whoa and I went back and tried it and then actually I could get the bigger pin in, split pin in. So anyway, well what I'm thinking is I'm going to take this back off and put that new detente spring in. I probably wouldn't have done but I'm going to have to do something about this and the easiest thing I can think of is if I've taken the cover off I'll just weld this hole up, drill it and re-tap it to the 2BA. My Allen bolts came and they got the order wrong. I should have had six of one size, they only had two. I should have had two of another size, they only had one. So that was annoying, but it's getting to be par for the course for this. So anyway, changing that spring on that, I won't show you. So let's get on now and can't think of anything else I have to say. No, let's get on and put the clutch and everything together. Right, this might end up being a short video. You might even have heard me cursing. I don't have a lock washer for the clutch sender. I could have sworn I have a bag of them somewhere. Because you know, I'm forever taking clutches off these and they're all the same, B25s, B44 and everything. Anyway, I can't find any. But, we can do an awful lot just with putting the nut on and then I can take it off and put lock washer on when I get it. So, I've already put the oil seal in here and the centre spacer. The spacer is actually chamfered on one side and the chamfer goes to the outside. I've put keyway, not a keyway, I've put a key in here and there are two Woodruff keys which are slightly different. So make sure you put the right one in there. We're not going to need the key for the alternator because that is, there's a special way of putting the, the electronic thing on. So, okay, what we're going to do now, got our key to the top. Because this is an endless chain, we've got to put the clutch and the sprocket on at the same time. So that means we've got to get the splines on the sprocket right and we've got to get 
key there in there so if you hold the center get that on the key hold the center then you can move that the outside part will move so that's gone onto there that's gone onto there so all we're going to do is put the big washer in and we'll just put that nut on for now god that's so bloody annoying Now I have a completely new set of plates, thought why not. So they'll go in and then the pressure plate when we get that. Okay, so what about this side? Right, the C15, the early one, didn't have a chain tensioner. So there are just those spaces to go on there for the state that you go on but I do have a spare one of these and I think yeah that will fit so what I've got to do now is turn one of these down to go in there that one goes on I think they're the same length I just checked and they seem to be one and a thirty second yeah so I don't need anything on there but this one I'll measure that and I'll go and turn one of these down so let's have a look what have we got here with that in there tight that is five eighths Half. So well, let me, I don't think I'll be able to get the calipers in, but let's see if I can get a better measurement on that. I can just get the calipers in if I lift the chain up, so. It's actually a half inch. All right, so let me go and turn that down. So there's our shortened spacing piece. Put that on there. Goes there, goes there. Okay. Right, everything is grand, it misses that, it misses that. Now, if you were putting the new clutch and everything on and not what you'd taken off the engine, you should check the chain line. Check the face of this sprocket against the face of that sprocket. But as this all came off, it's uh, lined up. I mean, you could still do it if you wanted, but it's it's going to be fine. So that's nice. Let me go and get the uh, electronics bits and see the instructions for that. The instructions say to fit the stator as close to there as you can get it so they provide you with some little uh, alloy spacers but it turns out with these the original steel ones on we're only the thickness of two washers so rather than trying to make up a space I've used two washers there but I measured this here and <laughs> that spacer that needed to be another 600 Out. Ooh, that's cutting that off to close the hole up a little bit let me just ease that out all right that's those couple of little burrs off there so we want the wires to the top because in this one the wires go out at the top Wash 
pressure on each of them. Spread the thing and the little lock washer. So that gets that on there. I'll just put it in the middle of the slots. There's a little mark on here. Actually, I can't find in the box any instructions as far as the timing goes. It's got the wiring diagram. It's got this about the spacers and the stud lengths and all that sort of stuff. So we'll just tighten them up finger tight. We've just got a nice gap down there. So let me pull you back and we'll see about doing this wiring. Right then, first thing we want is a grommet. One of the good moves they did when they redesigned that was moving that hole to the front. Because the wires come out, they actually come out underneath inside there. It's like the Triumphs. The Triumphs are even worse, they've got a stupid tube that comes in. Never understand who came up with that. Anyway, they all need to go pull that grommet down. And that goes through and that goes through. Alright. Then as I say, we've got to fish them out from inside there. Now I must admit they put lots of wire on which is nice there's nothing worse than it being only just enough that's going to go in there then it's going to go in there but we'll put another grommet on you see the bottom of there it's going to go in the bottom of here so let's get this grommet in the hole measured half inch so this is the half inch grommet put this grommet in first but sometimes if the wires are a bit tight in the wall you put them in before you put the grommet in because obviously being in the hole here this grommet can't stretch outwards which you can do actually it doesn't look to me as if this is the right grommet it just seems a bit big no let's try putting it back side first I think a smaller grommet is called for so let me do that there we go there was a 7 16th size one in the box of o-rings i have so that's in there right now that's going to go as i say we've got tons of wire i mean absolutely i can pull you out more can't i see that's going to go up in there so we've got absolutely tons and tons of wire they get affixed to them the yellow ones I guess they leave so you can shorten them but we won't we'll just keep on that then now then there is a hole down here for them to go through so we'll put them through there now don't forget in here yet yeah, we start to fit in an air filter Right, now let me see about putting a grommet in there, I think. Although the bottom bracket of this actually partly covers the hole. So, it'll be a slightly odd shape for the grommet to fit in. But let me do that. 
Well, this is a bit strange. The ones coming up from the generator have already got their pieces on, and as you can see, they're both females. And there's the ends to them. So I just went and got the supplied terminals out, and there's one male, and then there's what I would say looked like a female. However, when you look at these two, if you can see this, well, here, yeah, first of all, you can see that this one goes up further in there than that, it's different, but when you look at them, that one is a different size to that one. So, I think, I don't know what they're doing here. That one goes in there all right. It goes in there all right as well, actually, they're not different sizes. So, I don't know if I can close this up a little bit to fit in there. Let me see. Actually, this gets stranger, because I just went back to the little bag, and that's got the, the covers, that's a cover for a male, and that's a cover for a female. So, uh, what the hell is going on here? Let me investigate. Right, now what I've done is that one rolled up a little bit and I shortened the uh, outer cover. So that one should go, yep, that one goes in there now. And that the one goes in there. There's all our wiring, we'll fasten that back properly. That's in there now. So, I'll go and have something to eat, a cup of tea, and I'll go online and find out what Electrex World says about timing this. Now then, I know what I'm doing now, well, as much as I ever do, because don't forget, this actually is the first one of these I've fitted. All the others have just been ignition only, so, I've got this on now and it's shimmed so that the just clear of the chain and sprocket it says to put that on as close as you can get it then this has got to go on now what have we done with it? it comes with a spacing piece which you can or cannot use depending on how things are so what it says is this wants to go on so that it's not rubbing Alright, so what I've done, the only thing I can see is, well, there's a boss there, just in here, I think you can see. So I've put a little bit of uh, die chem red on it, and we'll fit this rotor, and see if it, uh, if it rubs against that. Because if it touches that, it's going to rub against these wires as well. No, it doesn't seem to be. So I guess that can just go on. Let me put the, where's the nut? There's a shouldered nut to make sure it's on there square. And I'm not pushing it off one side or the other. Of course this is bigger so I'm actually see that uh, let's see what that's like Oh yes, there's a rub mark on that. So 
so I think we'd better put that on just to be on the safe side so that goes on and then what have we done with it now oh, this tapered collar goes on it's a collet in effect now what we need to do is take this to top dead centre which I can do because I can see the piston so then on here you see that yep there are degree marks and you see a little bit of blue paint that's actually to show up a little pop mark what you do is you take it to top dead centre and then you set whatever degrees you want there as fully advanced to that one so it says for the uh, C15 35.5 so that's 34, 35, 36, 37 so I just want one and a bit and I just made it to jump round there As always these things move when you're tightening them up that's the one thing I don't like about them see that that's the top dead center no nope, that was that's all right okay so I'm going to put the clutch holding tool in there and then um, I actually have a, a flywheel holding tool I think I'll put that on there as well and we we'll see if we can't get this done without anything moving so let me gather me bits all right that's pressing whoa, whoa. you all right there that's pressing on the frame that's a top dead center That is at the right spot. Okay. So that would seem to be it. All right, take that off there. Let's have a look. That down, bring it back up to top dead center. Ah, it's moved. It's moved. It's only reading. 31 Boga Of course the thing is now this is pressed onto that now I bought an extractor for these I hope it works on this one let me go and get it right then I guess it fits all of them so that goes on there I put a couple of spacers on because one of them screwed all the way in but the other two seem to be maybe catching on the coils and obviously I don't want to go uh, doing that hang on let me make sure this is centered yeah spot on
Ooh. Right. I need something to put a bit more pressure on that. Sorry, I forgot to turn you back on there. I put the uh, clutch tool in and then that worked. Just that little bit of extra leverage. Okay, let me take this extractor off. Beware of easy jobs. I'll just pop this on here. Yeah, right. Okay. Let's get ourselves back to top dead center. Actually, with the uh, thing, I might be able to put this on just holding it. There we go. Don't know if I'm getting in your way here, but four thirty five. Okay, top dead centre, within half a degree, it might be reading 36 but that's alright. So that's on, we'll tighten that up a bit more when we've got the clutch in. So that's got all that on. Um, well, it's about time to finish now actually. I came back late from uh, lunch because this is Wednesday, January the 6th, and I was watching uh, Mob Rule in Washington. So it's getting late. I've ordered the couple of bits I'm missing. So, and I made sure it was UPS this time. But I'm just blathering on. So we'll call that a day. I'll do this video and we'll see if we can find some more bits to do tomorrow. Well, while I'm waiting for the clutch lock washer, I thought I'd do this uh, this threaded hole. So what I've done is I've obviously taken the cover off. Now it was a sort of a long thin hole so it's difficult to get into. So what I've done on both sides is I've sort of used a countersunk bit to make a decent sized hole to get into. I've also, this clamp here is holding a piece of uh, brass behind it. Well it's copper actually so that when I start welding it doesn't just fall through. So I'm going to fill this side up then turn it over and I'll fill the other side up and then we can drill and tap it. So I welded that up and I started filing it and I suddenly thought you know I've got a milling machine let me mill that get it nice and flat but also of course I need to drill vertically and tap so it's best I do it in here. So I'm just going to wear uh, take this off and um, where's my safety glasses hold on a second right that was handy me having to stop there because I saw that I was down to the battery light they you know nearly empty all right let's do this As you can see that's not completely flat so let me check I've got this bolted down and it isn't caught on anything. 
Well, that's all down flat, touching on four parallels down there. Let's try again. got that done. So let me lay the cover on this. Now I wasn't exactly sure what size tapping drill uh, for a 2BA so I went with a metric size because it measures about 4.6 millimeter so the bolt does. So anyway I drilled a hole in a piece of alloy just to check and tapped it and it was fine. So got the table locked down this is in the center The hole drilled and we can now run a tap down. Try it with the bolt. Okay. That's it. Perfect. Time for a cup of tea and a sandwich. All right, it is Saturday morning. It's only 20 degrees outside, which is why the heat is on. But um, my bits arrived. So there's the uh, lock washer. I took the precaution of ordering a couple extra ones. So we will put that on. Da, da, da. Now, B25 just have a plain thick washer. This one's got a recess, and I checked, and the recess goes got the parts book on the outside, and the um, that does fit into the recess. So we're all right. So that goes in there like that. Then, whoops, whoop. God, Michael, come on. Now isn't amazing. Oh, there it is. All right. So let me find. There it is. This tang goes into a little hole drilled in the side there. So that goes in there. And then this shoulder nut. Goes 
down into the middle of that. Right, so... Now then... We need that button on there. Oh, straight on, look at that. Now we're going to be that way. That there. Right, now then, let me get my... Where's my torque wrench? Hold on. Right, well, we're all set for this. This goes up to £60. So we've got that set. When I looked up the... Uh, settings for this electronic unit it said £40 for that there we go so while I'm here let me open you out oh you can see um, check this I had the electric thing set on the low setting just to bang that up there we go so that's set to 40 that's set to 60 now see we've got that one little tango in the hole there so we turn these tabs up, actually one is enough, and then that gives you a chance to reuse it. Then that is not going to come off there. That's just to save the people who make a comment. Look, I've done the both of them. These washers are cheap enough. Right. So there's that on there. Now we can put the clutch plates in. Now here's a little something about the clutch plates. I bought, as I say, brand new Barnett ones. Barnett plates from BSA are 130,000. According to the book, there should be 167. Right, so that's 37,000 per plate. We've got four plates in there. That's 120, that's 150,000 short. Basically, a plate so because this is a known thing a friend of mine suggested it might be because that's the thickness that this material comes in whatever so you'll see it mentioned to just put an extra plate in but the way these go together is they start with a plane and they finish with a plane so I have done a little experiment recently on my trials bike because although the clutch never slips when I'm riding it Quite often it slips when you kick start it, even at the lower compression. So what I did, I was thinking about it. I thought, well, really I need another plate, but actually I need thicker than this. So what I've been doing is, I have not here, because I'm not sure how this C15 gearbox will be. I get a brand new friction plate and I take the friction material off one side. That way, when we get to the end of the, the pack of plates, I've got friction material on the plane plate which is right but this side it's a plane plate which is exactly the way it should be so there's a little thing if you're having problems you might wish to try the spring for the uh, gear change cam plate came as well but as I say I'll just pop that in you don't need to see that you saw me putting all that together and I'll tell you what often happens I find and it's very annoying with something like that you know it, it was a little bit of a chew to put it together you get it all together and then you realize you've got to do something something minor always like changing that spring and then 
when you come to put it back together, the damn thing won't go back together. And you're spitting blood because you think, you know, oh, I had this all done. Right, what comes next? Where is it? There it is. Next thing is going to be our pressure plate. So, we need four of them. Go on in there. Don't things like this amaze you. Just taking these bloody things out of here. isn't there? Yeah, now it's in, it's alright. Now I notice as well with these, the B25 has a little, it's bumped out a little bit and there's a thing in the plate. I notice this doesn't have that. So that's got to go on there like so. Then we have our springs. Now I don't have the big screwdriver to put these on, so there's our springs. And then we have these doodads. And as I've mentioned before, I hate the ones where you've got to put them under pressure before you can get the thread to start. So I'm going to have to turn you off because I need to get the big screwdriver. And it's a big screwdriver, not so much because it's a big slot, but because it gives you a chance to put some real pressure on. Whoa! You know, what they do have is a little thing bumped down there and that's to stop, it's sort of like this, the actual spring acts like a lock washer. And I remember Charlie mentioning on his website one time about a whole bunch of these that were manufactured where they'd wound them the other way. So that instead of that acting as a stop to stop, them, stop it unwinding, they stopped it winding up. So you screwed it up, you got to a certain point and then the spring caught in there and it, you know if you don't notice it keep going it damages the spring it unwinds it so fortunately I've never come across that but as I mentioned the other week I'm starting to get highly disillusioned with the spare parts for the British bikes unless as these have been a number of these because this Peter Quickfella I think he must have bought out a bunch of BSA dealerships because the, uh, the parts I've got from him are almost always NOS parts. Right, so we'll screw this up. Now I'm just going to screw it up like that. We'll need to check by kicking the engine over to see that this plate's lifting evenly. And we've got to set the uh, the clutch rod as well. You know, in the arm that operates that on the other side, there is a tiny little ball, and I forgot all about it. So when I was prattling around, meant doing that welding repair, that little ball disappeared. Now, fortunately, I know I have one of those, so I'll put that on. All right. So there's our clutch on, um, 
and as I say it's sat there I feel everything's good so that's it for this week what we're going to do next week steam shop did I tell you steam shop hurt his back anyway because he hurt his back he couldn't go to Florida or at least he's been delayed and he's been delayed long enough that he's going to do my head for me in fact he's coming around this afternoon to collect it I got new valve guides thought what the hell if Dave's going to do it so we put new valve guides in new valves valve springs all that sort of stuff so it'll be a nice head oh before I go uh, where is it hold on a second while I was on Peter Quick's site I spotted that and that is the thing that should go in there it does but it's a tight fit anyway could you see that no of course not hang on people hang on people do, 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 do. all right rewind this is the connector to go in there it actually should go in that way and it's threaded at this end to screw onto the car so I thought great I'll get one of them and uh, so it came it was like $20 not a lot but you know I go to put it on so I check and this engine should have a 375 carb and it's got not a 375 a three, yeah 375 it's got a 376 now according to the parts book for the later C15s they put the 376 on the sports model so I'm wondering here that you know with this engine number this is definitely just a 59 BSA C15 star the casting number on the cylinder head was the same it's the right one for a 59 box standard model but I have got this apparently high cock piston the head's got the bigger valves in it and now I find I've got a larger for the C15 star it should be 7 eighths that's one and a sixteenth that is the size for the US spec sports star so it's all very confusing but anyway I'll have to make up something now to go from there to there because I'm going to use this car I've got a rebuild kit for it and uh, say the slide doesn't seem to have much play in it at all I think it'll be fine and as somebody mentioned in a comment I thought this was going to be a low cost uh, job well as I mentioned before they never ever are all right so as I say that's it for this week so I'm gonna go and sit by the heating well we'll put our little gas stove on as well as the central heating so I'm gonna be nice and warm this afternoon glass of something alcoholic and a book and I don't know what you're gonna do but whatever it is stay safe and enjoy it <laughs>